Hey everyone, Lyric here, and I'm the author of the best-selling business ethics book, Workplace Neurodiversity Rising. I am an autistic ADHD adult, and I share my experiences as a neurodivergent individual, helping to reduce the stigma and share information about neurodivergence and neurodiversity, neuroinclusion, and why it matters to everyone with a brain, which is probably you too. This week, I am going to be talking about normalizing big feelings and overwhelm. Specifically, I'm going to be talking about my experience with meltdowns as an autistic person. If you would like to know more, please stay tuned. I learned to repress instead of express because people reacted poorly whenever I tried to share what I wanted, need, and felt. I swallowed my rage, discomfort, worries, and pain over and over again because I was used to people around me not giving me space to express my needs, my feelings, and what I thought. I learned to bottle it all up because I had no external outlet for my experiences. Everything that is unexpressed is put away or on pause and placed in a holding area which has limited space. Raw and unprocessed emotions become fuel for a mental explosion if they're not vented before it's too late. As a multiply neurodivergent person who's also queer in multiple ways, I find myself putting things away frequently because much of my experience is beyond what others can understand or have space for. For most of my life, I had a very large container allowing me to store all of my pain until my container would fill up. Then when the pain became too much and too much pain accumulated, eventually I would overflow, melting down making room to swallow more suffering. I've been thinking a lot about autistic meltdowns recently, how they are similar to other types of overloads, what causes them, and what people need to prevent and recover from meltdowns. I've been reflecting on the fact that autistic overloads have their own name, pondering why our overloads have their own name when everyone occasionally gets overloaded, I've been thinking about how I and many other autistic people start the day with our emotional loads already at capacity. And I've been reflecting on how much easier my days are when I can start with more space in my container compared to beginning when I'm already ready to overflow and how our society's design contributes to me being constantly spread too thin. Would non-autistic people be overwhelmed more frequently if they lived in a world not designed for them? What changes could we make to our society to make it more inclusive for everyone? It's time we reconsidered society's design. Our world caters to non-autistic people, but imagine how much easier life would be if it also considered the needs of autistics and other neurodivergent people. For the most part, autistic overload is not that different from overloads in non-autistics with two main differences. One being the triggers. The world we live in has been designed by and for non-autistic people, which means the world as we know it is literally designed not to trigger non-autistic slash neuro-average people. Non-autistic people live in a world optimized for their needs. They aren't getting set off by everyday things that can hinder autistic success. On the other hand, the things that trigger me are everywhere integrated into modern society. Fluorescent lighting, strong smells, crowded echoey spaces, surprises, last minute plan changes without the grace I need to process new information, and expectations that I behave, act, and communicate as non-autistics do, although our brains are very different from one another. Additionally, because autistic people are in the minority, the things that trigger us, such as sensory overload, are not seen as socially acceptable 
In contrast, non-autistic triggers like stress from work or relationships are seen as reasonable. Another difference in autistic overloads is the intensity. Many, not all, autistic people have intense emotional experiences. Since our internal emotional experiences can be powerful when we feel strong emotions, our outward expression matches what we feel inside. If you've ever had a panic attack, you know what being overwhelmed and afraid feels like. It's not a pleasant feeling. As someone who has both, I can compare the two pretty easily. Autistic overwhelms share a few traits with panic attacks in that there is, for me, an intense emotional fear response and adrenaline pumping through my body. I feel as if I'm in grave danger and I may experience feelings of wanting to escape or get out of whatever situation I'm in, even if escape is impossible or unsafe. Some autistic and other neurodivergent people may experience their emotions more intensely and have less impulse control. Because of this, our reactions to overloads of all types can seem bigger than those of people who experience their emotions less intensely or have more impulse control. Imagine a world where everyone is met with compassion and understanding. In such a world, I would be overwhelmed less frequently because when I remove myself from the world and surround myself with people who get me, I am overwhelmed and melt down less. This underscores the crucial role of understanding and compassion in reducing the frequency of meltdowns. Knowledge is power. When I was newly diagnosed, I didn't know the types of situations I should avoid and I had more frequent meltdowns and other kinds of overloads. However, as I gain knowledge about my triggers and I learn to remove them from my environment, the frequency of my meltdowns decreased, which makes me wonder what if our world was less triggering for people like me. For instance, what if there were more quiet spaces in public areas or sensory friendly lighting and other sensory friendly designs were common in our society? What if people understood meltdowns like other kinds of overloads? What if people acted compassionately when they saw someone breaking down instead of judging them for not keeping it all together? What if it wasn't shameful to have big feelings or to become overwhelmed? These are just a few changes that would make a significant difference in my life and helping me with overloads and meltdowns. What is something you would change about the world to make it less overwhelming for you? Do you have any thoughts about what the world would be like if it was catered more to autistic and neurodivergent needs? Do you think you would have more or less meltdowns in a world that was more compassionate and was more sensory friendly and respected the fact that people sometimes need time to adjust to new ideas and to schedule changes? And if people just were better to us when we're not doing well, do you think you'd have more or less meltdowns? Because I can't help but feel like if neuroaverage and non-autistic people lived in a world that completely ignored their needs, they'd be overwhelmed more frequently too. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for hanging out with me on my couch today in our living room and letting me talk about this thought I've just been having recently about meltdowns and how they can be exacerbated or made easier depending on situations and environments we're in and the people we're around and how people respond when we are overwhelmed, whether they're compassionate or if they are blaming us. Because in my experience, when people blame me and aren't compassionate for me and make me feel worse, it often can make my meltdown worse. I'd love to know your thoughts, your experience, your ideas, what you think about these ideas. This was based on a Substack post that was put out September 2nd, 2024. The video will hopefully be out today, which is Sunday, September 15th for my paid subscribers on Substack, Patreon, and YouTube. I will be releasing it to the wider public sometime in October in about two weeks when it's been finalized. Thank you to my Substack and Patreon subscribers and the YouTube channel members 
because you literally do make this content possible. It wouldn't happen without your support. I'm eternally grateful for you. If you have suggestions, requests, or comments on future video topics that you would like to see covered, I'd love to know. Drop them in the comments below. That's, that's it for today. I will talk to you next time. Bye all.